Well hello everybody, welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to be making a beef and mushroom pie with a, a buttery short crust pastry. So it's going to be a double uh, pastry, so you have pastry in the bottom and pastry over the top. Um, now I'm actually making slightly more than I need but I will give you the ingredients that are needed just to fill this. I'm doing a little bit more because I want some for dinner tonight. Um, but in fact, I'm going to make the, the, the filling and I'm going to refrigerate it overnight and do the pastry in the morning, uh, ready for dinner tomorrow. So, uh, I also want to say that I've got this recipe from the Hairy Bikers, which is a BBC television programme and I've adapted it slightly. In their recipe, they uh, cook the, the filling in a casserole dish in the oven. I'm going to do mine on top of the cooker. It will work just as well, I think, um, but you just have to be careful with the, the amount of heat that you're putting into the pan. So if you wanted to do it in the oven, you would preheat your oven at this stage to 130 Celsius. Um, so that's going to be about 300 Fahrenheit, I'll check that. Now, I'll do the ingredients as if we were doing it for this pan. So that would be uh, 700 grams of steak or uh, whatever beef you prefer, because we're slow cooking it, I'm using skirt. Two medium onions, cut in half and then sliced two cloves of garlic chopped, two tablespoons of Worcester sauce, uh, three tablespoons of plain flour, 25 grams of butter, 150 millilitres of red wine, 250 grams of chestnut mushrooms. I, I think you could use other mushrooms, but chestnut mushrooms um, are what the recipe asks for, and they do taste very good. It says one bay leaf, but I'm going to put two bay leaves in and 500 millilitres of beef stock. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to fry off our beef to brown it. And we're going to do that in two stages so that um, the beef doesn't saute, it actually fries. And then we're going to mix that with flour and we'll go on to the next step. So the first thing for me to do is to uh, heat a couple of tablespoons of oil over um, in a frying pan and we'll get frying. So um, I'll be back with you when I'm ready to put the, the meat into the pan. So I can see that the oil is nice and hot so I'm going to put half the meat in. and I want to brown it on all sides. I have another pot ready to take the meat once it's brown.
Okay, I'm going to take that meat out and put it into my pan. Now, if your frying pan is losing its oil, you can have some more oil available on the side, which I have, and you can just put a drop more in. Okay, so then we'll put the rest of the meat in. Now I've left fat on this meat because it gives flavour. I did take some fat off where there was too much, but I've left some on. Okay, so our meat's okay. Now I've turned the heat off. For the time being, and I'm just going to pour a little bit more oil in. Just let it coat the pan. And then I'm going to turn the heat back on, but I'm going to turn it low. And I'm going to saute the onions in that same pan with the garlic. And just till the, the onions are, have softened a bit and gone a little bit translucent. That's going to take a while. Now, while the onions and the garlic are sautéing, I'm going to add my three tablespoons of flour on top of the meat and stir it round to coat it. This will act as a, a thickening agent as we cook everything together. So as you can see, I've coated the meat with the flour. We'll just set that to one side until our onions are ready.
So after about five minutes of softening the onions like that, you can add in your 150 millilitres of red wine and your two tablespoons of Worcester sauce and you then want to bring that to the boil and you want to make sure you're stirring it around to deglaze the bottom of the pan so that any meat juices that may have stuck to the pan get pulled up into the wine mixture. You bring that to the boil and then you're going to pour that into the pot with the meat in it. Stir it round to mix the, the onions, garlic and the meat together. Then you throw in your bay leaf and pour in your beef stock. and you mix that round and bring it to the boil. Just wanted to get the last remnants of the stock out and a little bit more now at this stage you can add some salt and some pepper to taste I usually add just a little because once it's cooked I will add more if, it, if it's needed. The thing is you cannot take it out once it's in, but you can put more in if you need it. Now if you wanted to do this in the oven, if once you've brought it to the boil in your casserole dish, and it has to be a, a, a flame proof casserole dish obviously, um, you would then cover it and put it in the oven and you would cook it for an hour and a half. I'm going to cook it on a very low heat for an hour and a half on here and then uh, we would still have the mushrooms to add and I'll explain that in a minute okay so I have uh, the beef mixture and it's simmering just slightly and I'm going to let that simmer away for an hour and a half and then I'm going to add the mushrooms. So for the mushrooms, very important with mushrooms not to wash them. If you wash them, you're adding water into them, the water absorbs so that when you fry them, it all turns rather nasty, but you do need to clean them. So take a, a paper towel and brush them.
just like that till you've cleaned them all off then cut them in half or if they're large ones cut them into quarters and before they go into our pie mixture we're going to fry them off in a little bit of butter just for a couple of minutes so I'll carry on cleaning these and I'll be back with you when we're ready to fry off our mushrooms and put them into the pie mix so our our meat and onion mixture with the red wine has been cooking for an hour and a half <coughs> and uh, um, I've just heated some butter, the 25 grams of butter and I'm going to just fry these mushrooms in that butter for five minutes. I finished cleaning them off with a paper towel as I showed you earlier and then I I chopped them in halves or quarters depending on how large they were I'm actually going to just put a little bit more butter in the pan <coughs> Okay, so that's enough. So I'm going to take the lid off the meat. I'm going to pour these mushrooms into it. And I'll just bring that over like that. Stir it round and there's still quite a bit of liquid in this and it will remain in it um, which is fine because what you do is you drain some of the liquid off to use as gravy later so I'll just give you a little look at that as it looks now now I'm going to let that cook for another 30 minutes then I'll come back with you and I'll show it to you. Right, I'm back now and um, my pie filling is made. I've actually strained off some of the gravy and um, that's fine. I may actually strain a bit more off. I'm going to let this cool down completely. It's still very hot in the bowl. And then I'm going to cover it with cling film and put it in the fridge and leave it overnight. The same with the gravy. I'll just taste a little bit. Mm. It is cooked to perfection. It just, if you put it in your mouth and press it, the individual strands of meat come apart. Okay, so now it's the next day and the meat for our uh, steak and mushroom pie is in the fridge and so now it's time to make the pastry for that I have 250 grams of cold butter which I've diced 400 grams of plain flour 
one large egg yolk whisked together with two tablespoons of cold water. So the first thing to do is to put our flour into the food processor, which is much the quickest way of doing this. And then put our butter in as well. And then we're just going to pulse it until it forms uh, sort of rough breadcrumbs. And that's about right. I'm just going to check that around the edge. Yep, that's all fine. So then, the next thing to do is to process it with our egg and cold water mixture until it just comes together into a ball. And that's as good as we need. So, there's a little bit of flour loose there. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of flour and I'm going to pull this together into our dough Don't want to overwork it. It's nice and short, as you can see. And what I want is to take about one third of that off. That's okay. And then form it into a ball, pat it down into a disc.
and put it in cling film and we're going to chill the pastry dough for 20 minutes before rolling it out. That's one. Do the same with this. Put it into a bowl. Flatten it out into a disc and put it into the fridge for 20 minutes and then we need to preheat our oven to 210 celsius that's 190 celsius with a fan and 410 fahrenheit ready to bake our pie So I'll put these in the fridge and I'll be back with you in 20 minutes. Okay, I made a big mistake. I forgot to press record. So let me explain what I've done. I've rolled the pastry out and I've lined the, the pastry dish, the, the pie dish, with some parchment paper and I've actually put two other strips of parchment paper in which is going to help me when I cut the pie I can hopefully lift that and it will ease getting a quarter of the pie out. That was just my own silly idea it may work it may not and then I filled the pie with the meat filling draining off some of the gravy. I also lined the bottom of the pastry with a uh, tablespoon of semolina to absorb any moisture that may come from the, the, the pie uh, so that we don't have a soggy base to our pie. I've then egg washed around the edge and I've rolled out the second piece of pastry and uh, put that on top and just crimped it with a fork. Now that's going to go into the oven and it's going to cook for 30 minutes. The oven is at 210 Celsius, 190 Celsius with a fan, uh, that's 410 Fahrenheit. Cook it for 30 minutes and it should then be done. So I'll be back with you when the pie is cooked. Okay, so now I'm back with you and my pie baked for 30 minutes. Now, as ever, I'm not having a very good time with this video. Um, I forgot to tell you to egg wash the top of the pie. So it was in the oven for two minutes before I realised I took it out, egg washed it and put it back in. So I baked it for 30 minutes then I gave it an extra two minutes uh, to take account of the fact that I'd had it out of the oven for that little bit of time. Now it's piping hot and I, unfortunately I can't cut into it because I have to deliver it uh, to a, a family member. Uh, I'm going over there and we're having this for dinner this evening. Uh, but if I do get a chance, I'll try and take at least a photo of it so that I can put that onto the video um, at the end as well. Or maybe even take a bit of a video. Uh, but if you've enjoyed this video, even though I've made a couple of mistakes, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. There's buttons below the video for that. There's also the information button uh, on the top left hand corner of the screen that you can click at any time to get the recipe. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I have to tell you the pie smells absolutely wonderful. I mean I can smell the, the filling and I can smell the buttery short crust pastry. So. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, I hope you have, and I'll be back with you soon with another video. So until then, happy baking.